I'm Mike, and in this episode, whether you call it your probiotic bacteria, your microbiome, or simply your gut, they're all telling you the same thing, and that is, go vegan. Our probiotic bacteria never cease to amaze me. They can manipulate our cravings to their advantage, they can hijack our vagus nerve and play with our emotions, or they can just lower our stress levels. All of this is the new realm of psychobiotics, which is super cool and I'll probably get into in the future, but for this episode, it's gonna be how your microbiome can cause disease. This is because the battleground of disease is our gut, and our diet is feeding the armies. So what's really going on when you eat meat or other animal products? Well, it turns out they're more likely to send you into a state of dysbiosis, or simply put, an imbalance. Scientists say, quote, gut dysbiosis may contribute to a myriad of ailments in the host, including allergies, celiac disease, gastric cancer, autism, obesity, anorexia, irritable bowel disease, Crohn's disease, and tattoo diabetes. Touching back on psychobiotics, dysbiosis can have crazy effects on you mentally as well, including worse memory, decreased brain plasticity, and just general anxiety. I first got super interested in this subject when I heard that someone got a fecal transplant from a hunter-gatherer of the tribe Hazda people of Tanzania. It turns out that they have the highest level of microbial diversity in their gut out of anybody measured, at least according to this New Yorker article, which happened to completely ignore the fact that they eat a plant-based high-fiber diet of 80% calories from plants. This article in Science got close by pointing to their high fiber diet, but everyone seems to be missing the mark that the more plants you eat, the better your microbiome does. Well, let's dive right into the research. There was a 2014 study that was published in the journal Nature that compared people on a high animal food diet versus a high plant diet, and the results were pretty amazing. Amazing enough for this researcher to say, I mean, I love meat, but I will say that I definitely feel a lot more guilty ordering a hamburger after doing this work. This is because the study found that the animal-rich diet within 24 hours caused a bloom in bilophila, which is a bacteria that's associated with inflammation and colitis. For more information about colitis, you can watch my video on ulcerative colitis, which talks about how protein ferments into hydrogen sulfide, which rips apart your colon lining and your DNA, which is why it's called a genotoxin. The benefits of a vegan diet for your gut are seemingly endless. A review of dozens of studies stated that the vegan gut profile appears to be unique in several characteristics, including a reduced abundance of pathobionts, or potential pathogens, and a greater abundance of protective species. Reduced levels of inflammation may be the key feature linking the vegan gut microbiota with protective health effects. Vegans also had higher levels of bacteria called F. prosnitsi, which, quote, appears to play a significant protective role in metabolic disease low levels of which are associated with intestinal disorders, inflammation, obesity, and again, type 2 diabetes. So all of this seems to support Neil Barnard's research that a plant-based diet reverses diabetes. Another huge benefit of a plant-based diet is the increased fiber consumption. We can't digest fiber ourselves, but it turns out our gut bacteria can extract propionate from fiber. The propionate then enters our bloodstream, which controls our appetite, as well as the production of new fat cells, and inhibits cholesterol. Which brings me to heart disease, and specifically atherosclerosis. A major cause of heart disease may be how animal products interact with our gut, specifically the carnitine in meat and the choline in eggs and dairy. Both carnitine and choline are broken down by our gut microbes and our liver, into trimethylamine and oxide, which is shown to increase cholesterol buildup and decrease the natural clearing away of cholesterol in our arteries. Trimethylamine and oxide has also been, quote, directly linked to atherosclerotic heart lesions, which are the main factor in instant cardiac death. And as a vegan, not only do you not have to worry about trimethylamine and oxide from eating meat, you also wouldn't have to worry about it from taking a carnitine supplement. Here's a study showing the TMAO levels of someone that just ate a steak versus a vegan that just had a carnitine supplement. Turns out vegans don't have a high level of the specific microbes that break down carnitine into trimethylamine and oxide because we simply don't need it. We don't eat carnitine and our body makes carnitine naturally. This choline consumption and trimethylamine and oxide production thing might have something to do with cancer as well. When you're looking at the chances of dying from prostate cancer, quote, 
Men in the highest quintile of choline intake had a 70% increased risk of lethal prostate cancer compared with men in the lowest quintile. So what's the takeaway from all this? Vegans are essentially creating super guts. So if you aren't vegan, should you maybe do a vegan cleanse? Well, remember, the gut bacteria can make a complete 180 in just 24 hours. So in conclusion, go vegan and stay vegan. If you want some insights into how to stay vegan, you can watch my upcoming video, Why Vegans Fail. Thank you for watching.